Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we're unboxing one long-awaited, very interesting and highly demanded kit in 35th scale. This is T55 and this one here is from Miniart. It is a logical continuation of their pre-production T54s that we have reviewed before and it features a scale model of one of the most iconic tanks ever built. Luckily, the kit has full interior and it is one of those mini art kits that you get pretty much everything in one piece at a very, very affordable price. In the set we have plenty of marking options and by plenty I mean more than one could wish for. Not being a fan of Soviet weapons, I must admit that this tank is a milestone in the tank warfare and military history of the world. It is still widely used and even though far from competitive nowadays, it still gets a lot of respect and admiration. This is 1963 model, pretty much the basic version of the vehicle. The turret is simple and on the 3D renders there is no anti-tank machine gun visible. However, the complex interior is here and it is both pleasant for the eye and intimidating. Opening the thick box we can get a neatly arranged translucent plastic bags holding the parts. Those bags are 3 in total and they hold hundreds of parts each, so be prepared for a challenging build. Packing is very well done and I believe that it is the most that any company could have squeezed out of the regular box size, simultaneously protecting the parts and not put everything into a single envelope. As you might have guessed, that is more or less impossible here. Have in mind that once you open everything, it is advisory to mark it and put it aside since there will be hardly any room in the box if you try to pile up everything back. On the bottom of the box are the instructions and that is what we will begin with today. Among the best instruction sheets on the market are those produced by MiniArt. There are only few companies that does them better. The booklet features thicker and glossy paper for the outsides, which also includes the color versions. For the insides, things are being a bit simplified, but still at a very high level. After a sprue description, which is huge in this case, the engine is the first thing we should build with this T55. It is not made by overly many elements, but it is just about enough and from my experience I can assure you mini art engines are beautiful. This here is worth displaying aside from the built model as a standalone kit by itself. Then on things get more and more serious. The floor interior and the suspension follows and have in mind that those should be prepped for closing at the very early stages of the build. That means some parts should be painted and weathered before they are installed because once in, they are to stay there for good. This is a kit for trained and experienced modelers for more than one reason. Especially notable one are the munitions in the tank. In real life T-55 is crowded. Now imagine that in 35th scale. Every shell has to be painted and weathered before installed. Even though weathering on those isn't significant, it should be there. And the amount of separate shells is intimidating. Almost every cubic feet of this tank is used to store ammo in real life. Of course you can avoid using all of them, but still the interior sides feature a lot of parts and everything should be thought through before installed. Especially the walls on both sides with all the supplemental gear. All of this will take time to do preliminary painting, attaching the separate parts, weather some before that and some after. After that you should equalize everything to get a smooth look and realistic appearance. That goes for all the driver's compartment, ammunition racks and of course the engine section where weathering should be approached in a slightly different manner. 
Good photo reference is a must with this tank and I should suggest that Miniart might include some in the near future or start selling it as a separate accessory. This here is a way way too much information to be dealt with in one go. Time will be needed to check everything and to add the proper look to each and every bit. Then on the kit continues with the wheels, the top of the hull and many more parts from the exterior. However, things are not getting easier by any means. By this time your interior work should be almost completed, which is like building a model within the model. On the outside there is plenty of photo etch details to be added and in case you decide to do damage, even do more work and eventually add some scratch built parts. Not that this kit needs many, but still for the detail maniacs out there, there is this option too. Building the fender, squeezing the tracks and then on continue with the fuel drums would be time consuming. And just when one might think the hassle is over, then comes the turret. The detail on this here is insane. You will get hysterical if you do not love to build small details. Luckily, Mullers enjoy that part usually. The space in the turret is more limited, thus more attention will be needed and with that time. My estimates are that if you want to include everything inside, weather it and prep it for a show, at least 9 months of work will be needed on this T55. The single thing that I would like to add, and this is only me here, is a metal gun barrel. Even though 99% of the mini art detail is superb, the barrel will look better if made from real metal. The weight of that might cause additional troubles though and have in mind that if you decide to follow my advice here. Everything else seems perfect, very demanding and probably time consuming, but beautiful. The first and the largest envelope holds most of the big sprues inside. They are decently arranged, avoiding damage as much as possible. Here we have turret parts, some of the lower hull parts, including the sides, fenders, hatches and many many small and intricate parts as you might expect. I won't deal with all of those, but instead will focus on the elements that I believe are most interesting and best molded. That means only that I don't want to bore you to death with every single part included. Not that they do not deserve attention. There is too much to be shown in a simple review though. Besides, you'll want to have at least few surprises left if you decide to buy this kit for yourself. Nice impression makes all of the fabric imitations all around the kit. You'll be able to see that further on too. Also, complex molding is present for many of the parts included. That features all kinds of elements used in the tank which bear their baggage too, as elements I mean. Let me explain. Complex elements have a lot of plastic to be removed. That is there to keep the original part in proper shape and still have the strength and flexibility needed. This is a simple molding technique. Wherever is needed, texture is present and in such manner that you cannot miss that. You might add some, of course, through primer or through putty and a rough brush. A lot of molded cables and small elements are visible on the sides too, which can be further improved as well, with simple scratch techniques, but in general not much is needed here. Even if you decide to keep the kit as it is, which I would suggest, you'll be able to enjoy this a lot. Another wonderful mini art feature are the wooden textures. They are among the best I've seen and for example, compared with Tamiya or Trumpeter, those are light years ahead, as well as the welding marks all over the tank. Mini art have welding marks that are smaller and finer than the competition. A lot more into scale. Trumpeter welding marks are a bit exaggerated, 
and even though sometimes exaggeration cannot be avoided, with welding marks is unnecessary. We have some engine elements in this envelope as well as in the second one too, you'll see in a bit. Engines from Miniart are too among the top in the business. As you can see, a lot is present here. And the quality is top notch. That goes for all of the elements. Small or large, it doesn't matter. Detail is consistent among all of the sprues here. As you can see, even the tiniest elements are recreated with devotion. Miniart new plastic material allows for such delicate plastic sins because it is no longer a trouble. Even if you break something, you can hardly blame the material anymore. Of course, not everything is small parts and ammunition in this kit, but as you can see, a lot of the sprues are flooded with those. It is inevitable in case you want to make such a complex scale model kit with full interior and being a tank from the T-Series. Those machines were complex by nature, crowded and filled with many elements that later on became useless and were substituted with better technological decisions. But that only means you will get to enjoy more plastic sub-assemblies and more challenges. The idea behind this kit is exactly that. Turret parts are not a bit easier in terms of engineering and assembly that sits ahead of you. As I mentioned before, the fabric here, which is the part of the turret exterior, is done with superb quality. Eventually only resin will be better and not by much. The rest of the detail is simply mind-blowing. And this here represents mostly outer parts. However, the sub-assemblies are far from capabilities of a newbie in the hobby and might challenge some experts too. So be aware of that. Even though everything might look easy with this kit, it is far from it. You shouldn't let the nice appearance of the parts fool you. You gotta be prepared for the challenge ahead of you. In the end, some of the nicest texture I've seen on a kit. Superbly done and I don't believe there is a better substitute for those made from any other company. Just note the texture on both the fabric and the casting on the mantlet. I haven't seen anything like it on a T-Series tank in any scale. Very very beautiful. This is as close as a plastic model can get to a real tank. Great job from the Ukrainian company. Envelope 2 with its pile of sprues is slightly smaller. Here we have fewer large sprues, but in between them we have sandwiched smaller ones that hold parts that we will focus on later. This here is just like the sprues came packed. It is a bit of a mess and I don't like that. However, this is probably the only way to make this kit economically reasonable for the company. Each sprue in separate bag would be a disaster. Again, many small parts here which will get the most of your spare time modeling. There are large elements too, of course, but overall that is not what the kit impresses with, nor, and trust me on that, the thing you will remember it by. Mini art kits are like that. If you don't enjoy intricacy, stay away from those. Just imagine working on all this one step at a time. It is mind-boggling. Of course, many pros will laugh at my statement, but for me it is. That is because I prefer painting instead of working with so much plastic. With that said, I have to admit that I had the guilty pleasure of building 1D7 from Miniart, and I loved it even though it is as scary as this one here. So you'll probably handle it, but you need to handle it with care. Parts like these, on the other hand, are a real pleasure to be looked at. Those drums here might stay aside from the tank, since most of the T-55s and T-54s are seen without them. But look at the way they are done. 
absolutely amazing job with everything from mini art. Of course, that goes for all the smaller elements in this envelope too. As you can see, not a single one is missed or neglected. Driver's compartment area is full with elements that are unusually looking and strange in appearance. They are all done with style and devotion, despite their shape. Many of them might suffer during the building process, but that shouldn't discourage you. Everything will be quite rewarding in the end, despite the suffering you'll get through building all of this. The envelope ends with the large sprue that holds some of my favorite kit parts. Most importantly here is the gun barrel. That is something that I didn't like in this kit and in some of the other mini art T-series, at least not as much as I wanted to. It does not sit at the same level as the rest of the parts. Although I believe that it can be done in an acceptable manner, I have to add that this should be substituted with metal part in my opinion. It will look a lot better and you will save yourself from sanding and prepping the plastic part in attempt to make it look like any decent metal aftermarket barrel. And there are plenty of those available. Engine block is flawless on the other hand, as well as all of the engine elements and small parts on that sprue. All of it here is thin and as close to the real thing as possible. That goes for the storage boxes that can be found on the same sprue. Even though damaging won't be as good as with metal parts, these will do just fine since the plastic is forgiving and will let you work with it, bend it, damage it and make it look like metal. In my opinion, storage boxes are two among the best features of this kit and I would never exchange those for a photo edge. Again, only the barrel. As you can see, their texture is exactly like on the real tank and that by itself is a reason good enough to stick with those here. Besides, this kit does not need any more complications. Parts of those are thin, delicate and will suit 99% of the modelers or at least that is my humble opinion based on the people I know and their requests for perfection in scale modeling. Maybe I'm wrong, but at least it will suit me for sure and I trust that most of you will agree with me. Smallest envelope holds probably the most parts. Some of those are the tracks and the wheels. Several sprues of each, which will take a couple of days for prepping properly. Wheels are superb, featuring details from both of their sides. Threads on the tires, which will probably be removed for wear and tear appearance, plus those can be combined with some of the older wheel types available from other mini art kits. That will give even better appearance. Then the tracks. Those are probably the best tracks on any kit ever. They feature number castings and amazing details which will unfortunately be covered with dirt and mud. Still, if you decide to do a clean tank, those will shine brightly. Have in mind that with some patience they can be turned into movable elements. Some more suspension part next. Arms, minor details alongside with them on the sprues and of course the sprockets. All of those, especially sprockets, are beautiful. I know it is boring to make the suspension so complex, but this gives you the option to create partial damage and more than that. To understand the mechanics and engineering behind the real vehicle. Luckily, those are going to be difficult to spot if you mess something up rushing through. Then we have the ammo sprues. Nothing much to be said here besides a piece of advice. 
Use Alclads on those and you will be perfectly set. Alclads are strong and putting those into the racks won't damage your paint, hopefully. There are, of course, some fiddly parts here, but don't forget that the whole kit is like that. You'll find those everywhere if you get into mini arts game. The longest spruce and envelope number 3 holds some small parts, mostly from the interior. They are beautifully engineered and molded. Luckily, with the new plastic material that MiniArt uses, there will be no issues with cracking plastic and damaged parts. As you see, the quality of the detail is superb. Some of the handles can be substituted with metal parts made from scratch. But mostly, here everything looks pretty well arranged and set. Still, gear yourself up with the sharpest and most reliable cutters that there is available. That will help. Sanding some of those little guys here will cost nothing but headaches. And after all, not everything is small and fiddly parts here. So stay calm, don't drink any coffee and don't work when you're nervous. Not on that kit. If you do that, you will most likely stop your work before you're finished with the build, since this is a very demanding tank. The complexity repays at the end, but you should guarantee yourself that you will get there. So, take your time. Clear parts are something that I don't pay much attention to when it comes down to tanks. This is because they are barely seen, especially on old Soviet tanks like this T-55. Even if you see those on a real vehicle, they are more often than not damaged or dirty beyond recognition. With that said, yes, the clear sprue is nice and you will be pleased with the quality and the looks. But in my opinion, in the end, that doesn't matter much. Photo Edge envelope is something that cannot be closed here due to the size of the larger of the two sheets. The other one is small enough, but the big one is really big in this case. Mini Art Photo Edge is the thinnest and the most delicate one that you can find in a scale model kit. You should be careful working with that and avoid sanding it since you can damage some of the parts. And easily. We have more than 70 numbered photo edge details on both sheets here and some of those have repetitive elements so there is more than that number to be worked with. Gear yourself with a bending tool and find tweezers. The work here will be nothing short of a pure craftsmanship and a game of patience. The decals featured in the kit are marked mini art, but are most likely produced by Begemoth. For some people, those decals doesn't seal the deal, for whatever reason. From what I tested, they work just fine, but still, some keep complaining about them. The sheet is not big and features a lot of specific numbers like license plates and of course tank numerics. Some insignia too, but overall a modest one. That is of course what is expected from a Cold War Soviet made tank. Some of those like the yellow or the white circles can be masked off and painted, but others like the small letters for fuel and oil or the rump markings are only possible using decals. The versions that I am interested in feature less of those anyhow. The ones that the sheet starts with are not them. The first one is sand yellow, Iraqi vehicle and the second one is Vietnamese. The first one can be done abandoned easily, while the second is rather dull subject, at least from my perspective. Iraqi tanks are available around the web 
and in general are interesting subjects for modeling, especially if you use this kit as a basis. A short deviation here to the color chart presented by MiniArt. We have 24 colors listed, featuring ammo by Mick, Humbrol, Vallejo and others, plus the names of the colors themselves. You might need all if you intend to build all the versions included, of course, but if you are focusing on one tank, I can bet that only one third of what's described here will be enough for completing the project. More interesting versions follow at the end of the booklet. Those start with Israeli option, which I wouldn't recommend doing using this particular kit. Miniart are about to release the round with and without interior, so you better wait for that instead of wasting this T55 and paint it in sand yellow only. Next one is the Egypt version, which is better but still doesn't look interesting enough, especially compared to the Syrian one, which has black lines painted in between the colors of the camouflage. This is the one featured on the box art. Here, besides the camouflage, you can do a partially damaged vehicle, so this is one of the very good options in my opinion. Cuban and Finnish options are not bad too, but the Ethiopian ones beats them both. It can be done with severe damage and there are a lot of information around the web of heavily used tanks from that part of the world. Another wonderful basis for weathering and partial damage is here. The different drum colors and the chipping all around is very tempting. Those tanks are often seen without fuel drums, without fenders and with soldiers art all around them or you can find them abandoned too. More than one modeling techniques can be put into work here to create a showstopper. Iraqi option from the Gulf War in 1991 is the same deal here. Tanks from 1991 was quite often burnt and abandoned, so this here begs for a completely destroyed vehicle, which with that interior that you have at hand will be a piece of art if completed properly. In case you decide to go for a regular working vehicle using this tank, I believe the project will be rather dull. Same goes for the next two options. Parade vehicle, clean, and with white lines here and there, and the Soviet green vehicle used in Kiev. Both does not give you such great options as the rest with this kit. However, the last one is also a Russian green, but this is the most interesting and the most tempting one featured. The difference between those above and that one here are not only the white lines, but the history behind the vehicle. This is a tank from Operation Danube in Czechoslovakia in 1968. This is when communist Russia invaded Prague to keep their influence there and strangle the revolt that people started against their regime. For many, this vehicle will bring sad and disturbing memories for sure. Similar one was opted in the last tank I reviewed from Miniart, but from the Hungarian revolt 12 years earlier. Both of those revolts crushed with force and with the help of tanks. This can be recreated in so many options that I cannot begin discussing those. The important thing is that this tank can be replicated into a city street diorama or vignette that will bring a lot lot more to the spectator than just another good looking model. Especially for people that lived under the communist rule after Second World War. My deepest admirations to Miniart for including those versions in this kit and the one from 56 from Hungary and the other one. Best possible choice. So the million dollar question is, is this kit the best Cold War tank in 35th scale? I cannot be absolutely certain, but I think it is. It features a subject that is absolutely fantastic, a weathering and camouflage realm of its own. The possibilities are basically endless. Tens of thousands of T-55s were produced. That means, having in mind the mind-boggling realism and enormous number of additional elements here, 
that this tank has to offer years of work on several variations and still not be exhausted as a kit. You can do it partially damaged, with full interior, in perfect parade condition and in so many different colors that you will end up with a regiment of those of your own if you decide to test the options here. The level of detail is astonishing. The part numbers carry. It isn't suitable for everybody and that is the single reason I am not absolutely certain that this is the best Cold War tank kit ever. If it was a bit simpler, just a bit more user friendly, I would be categorical about it. With that said, for the experienced modeler, the one that fears no challenge, this is the best Cold War kit made so far. Mini Art stirred the waters again. Good job. Thank you for watching and don't forget to comment down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe and stay tuned for more. I will catch you in the next one.